Good morning, my name is Rob Green, and I'm the author of a book called Turning Wounds Into Wisdom. And today I wanted to talk about a subject I'll be covering in my book, and the subject we'll be talking about today is the idea of paranoia. Now, I think all of us are vaguely familiar with what the concept or the idea of paranoia is. It's when fear overtakes our imagination and we create all these ideas about situations that have not really happened yet. But how does this relate to our trauma? So in my book, I talk about a four-step process or the four steps in the path of pain. The first step is our traumatic experience. The second step is our attempt to pacify our emotions or to make ourselves feel better about the experience. This can be denial system, self-medication. This can lead to a lot of very bad habits we do in response to trying to make ourselves feel better in the aftermath of an emotionally traumatizing experience. The third step is paranoia. And what paranoia is in relation to trauma is a misguided attempt to protect the broken parts of ourselves. And what does that mean? You can imagine if I had a broken arm and I, I'm in a very sensitive state in my arm and if any kind of trauma or anything hits it, the bone won't heal properly and I'll be in my cast for months more than I'm supposed to. So I'm going to take extra steps not to bump my arm against anything. So I might put it in a cast, I might stay away from crowds or people, anything that can, or any potential risk that can actually injure my already injured injury. Taking those extra steps not to hurt an injured part of myself is something I'll do for a physical injury, but we do this unconsciously for an emotional injury. And what does that mean? So things that are related to our trauma are things that we're going to be paranoid in re-experiencing. So let's say, for example, like with a lot of veterans with crowds, if you've been in an IED attack or you've been attacked in a crowd, then going into a crowd again will bring up an unconscious feeling where you're trying to protect the broken part of yourself or the injured part of yourself. Let's say in relationships, we get scared to trust someone again if we've been betrayed. So our paranoia will have us always trying to reinforce this narrative in our heads. Oh, this person is probably texting someone else. Let me check their phone. Or, oh, they're probably going somewhere that they're, you know, that they didn't say they're going. Or we'll have all of these irrational fears because they're very extreme attempts to protect the emotionally broken parts of ourselves. Now, when we don't really fully process the emotions after our trauma and we just simply pacify them by denying they exist, turning to substance abuse, going to a whole different gamut of things we do to try to make ourselves feel better, in the shadows of that, our heart knows the truth. So our heart knows that these emotional injuries are still there. So it's going to take steps to try to protect itself by by basically translating these ideas into the mind and they manifest as forms of paranoia. Now, what do you do about it? That's a million dollar question here. If you find yourself getting into paranoid delusional states or being overly paranoid about things, just know that it's your mind's attempt to protect itself. Now, what it does off the back of that is it places you in a prison because you might not be able to live life fully and enjoy the things that you enjoyed prior to the trauma. So that's the trade-off. So if you want to come out of that prison of paranoia, you have to go prove it wrong. You have to be rational, you have to be logical, and you cannot let your emotions hijack your thinking. And you'll have to go investigate things. You'll have to be extremely self-aware. And self-awareness is a skill that's gained through meditation, through the physical practice of yoga, the asana. It's gained through mindfulness, and it's gained through activities done where you have to be fully cognitive and conscious of your own body. The idea of meditation in Tibet, they told me this, it means the word kom or gom. Now gom simply means being fully present in what you're doing. So my teacher Tenzin, he told me meditation can be cooking food, it can be walking down the road, it can be singing or chanting, it can be sitting and meditating like we commonly think it is. But the idea of meditation is simply being fully present in yourself to the point where you can separate and observe yourself as if you're observing another person. The more that you practice doing this, again, it goes back to the analogy of the basketball team. The more you practice shooting the baskets, when you get to the game, you're probably going to win. So the more you practice meditating, when, you f when you're faced with these triggered paranoias, you can use mindfulness as a practice to pull you out of that reactive state and allow you to confront these thoughts and these irrational emotions logically so you can be free of them. Again, because trying to keep ourselves safe inevitably puts us in a prison where we can't enjoy life fully. And when we're not enjoying life fully, we're doing ourselves a disservice because we're only here for a limited time. So I hope this video helps you. I hope you resonate with this. If this resonates with you and you think it's valid information, please like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff to get the word out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.